Hello guys, uh, my name is Bharat. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to learn a few things about DynamoDB. And this is the agenda. And let's jump right in. First of all, DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database. So what does that mean? It means that AWS will take care of all the administration tasks a database admin would typically perform to maintain a database. And this includes hardware provisioning, installation, setup, configuration, replication, software patching, all these things actually. So AWS will take care of that. So they are going to ma manage the database for you and you just need to consume it. You just need to utilize it. DynamoDB is designed to offer single digit, single digit millisecond latency, right? So it's the response times are in single digit milliseconds. So that is for normal workloads. So if you have like extreme workloads, it can vary a little bit, but it is designed to give very high performance. Well, in DynamoDB, data is actually loaded into solid state drives, which is why such low latency is possible. And encryption, so security is the most important thing for all the companies right now. So encryption is also offered. So encryption at rest is offered. And your data is replicated across multiple availability zones uh, in an AWS region. So if you by any chance lose your data due to like a corruption or disaster, you'll be able to recover it. So, so the, all that replication, high availability, durability, all that is taken care of by AWS. Like they will do their best to recover your, your data. Now the use cases are basically in mobile applications. Like that's where you use DynamoDB, mobile gaming, ad tech, and IoT applications, okay? Now let's talk about, well, before we talk about reads and writes, so I just want to, yeah, I just want to actually show you a quick demo. So now I am on the AWS console homepage and we can either go to services and under database, you will see DynamoDB or you can just simply search for it. So you will land on this page and let's just uh, straight away create a table. Now, normally, data is loaded you know using your application right but just to get familiar with dynamodb i just want to show you yeah, how you can do that on on the console right let's just get get familiar with it first let's actually give it a table name so i'm gonna call it employees when you create a table you need to provide a partition key or a primary key basically and the primary key for primary key, uh, the mandatory thing is partition key and you can optionally add a sort key. Partition key is sometimes called a hash key. So here I'm going to use a, a column or in DynamoDB it's called attribute called department ID as partition key and that is a number data type. Also I'm going to add employee id ha as the sort key so my primary key is a combination of partition key and sort key which is department id and employee id i'm going to use the default settings for now okay so i'm going to just go ahead and click the create button pass here for a couple of seconds okay now the table is created i am on the items tab and let's actually go ahead and create items so once you click on create item, you will get this window and you can start, you know, creating an item. An item is basically like a row in relational database, but it's DynamoDB is mainly a NoSQL database. So it can store JSON uh, type data, like it's a document store. So you can either provide data like this, or you can switch to like a text view and you will get like a JSON structure or basically you can fill in the data here. So let's say I am adding two more 
columns or attributes called first name and just call it Tom last name is Watson this is my first item so I'm gonna go ahead and click save and then it shows up here right away so let's go ahead and add a few more items so I already have you know JSON uh, documents ready or basically the items ready so I'll just copy paste to save some time Now here's one thing to notice. So you see like the other items do not have this level attribute. And when I'm adding a new item, I added, uh, yeah, when I added this new item, I added this level attribute. So this is the advantage. This is an advantage with uh, NoSQL databases or schema-less databases. So in relational databases, you would typically add a column first and then only you'll you know you'll be able to like insert data for those columns with schema less databases like you can just straight away insert items with new attributes so that's one thing the you know developers like a lot so i'm gonna keep adding a, few, a couple of more uh, items Well, if you see these two items, they have the same department ID. And if you remember, department ID is our partition key, but they have different employee ID. So the partition key doesn't have to be unique by itself, but partition key in combination with employee ID or the sort key uh, should be unique. So these two attributes should be able to uniquely identify a particular item, right? So that is one main thing. Now, how to update a column or an attribute? Let me update uh, this attribute right here. I'm just going to click on edit and then just say Harrison and then save. So that's how you update it. So CRUD, right? create read update delete so we have created a table so read i'll show you update i just showed you how to update an attribute d let's go ahead and remove one of these items so let me remove like maybe yeah let's select that and then actions delete delete now one item has been deleted or removed right how can you query this actually right so now you can change this to query and then so this is the employees table and this is partition key and sort key. So, so let's go ahead and uh, put some data here. So if I just put some random data, so nothing will show up. So, but if I put some appropriate uh, data in these fields, let's say like that. So you have one item showing up here. So that's that. So now, now let's look at this capacity tab. This is one of the most important tabs uh, that, that you need to understand. So here you can see that uh, we're talking about read write capacity, which is our next slide. So read write capacity. Um, so there are two capacity modes. One is on demand and the other one is provisioned. Okay. In on demand uh, mode, you don't have to worry about application your application getting throttled. So DynamoDB will accommodate. So this is on demand mode I'm talking about. So DynamoDB will accommodate your varying application read write needs. So there is no thr throttling. So your application can just do whatever. But in provision mode, like if you do want to throttle your application, which is a good idea because you don't want your application to run haywire. So if you do want to choose this provision capacity you need to kind of estimate the number of read and write operations your application will perform and you'll also need to guess the size of the items right so there is a limit for item size in dynamodb i think it's 400 kb but is is your item going to be 1 kb or 4 kb so you need to have sort of like a, like an estimate and then you need to also know whether your application will 
require strongly consistent reads or eventually consistent reads. So if you're wondering what that means is so a strongly consistent read is basically needed when you need your query, like, you know, the query that's coming from the application to return the most up to date data like when you need the most up-to-date data if your application needs the most up-to-date data you need to use strongly consistent reads and if you are used to working in relational databases then basically that's what you're doing all the time right like let's say oracle will always give you a strongly like you're always doing strongly consistent reads in oracle whereas eventually consistent read is basically when you do a read and your application will return slightly stale data. And this is usually like not stale by like several hours or days. It's stale by a few seconds. Like if you do a read of a certain attribute and then it might return, let's say 100, it could be a stale value. And that's you do the same read again same query again in a couple of seconds, it will return uh, an updated value. So that is eventually consistent read. So we have this example. Now, again, assume the average item size, like your, the, the items that you're gonna insert, the average item size is 4 KB. Then you will consume only 0.5 RCU to perform one eventually consistent read per second. So if you do one strongly consistent read per second, you will consume one RCU, right? And then similarly, if you're doing a transactional read, then you will consume two RCUs. If you're doing a standard write, then you will consume four WCUs. And this is because you can, you can write only one KB items like at a time. Right, so you you'll consume four WCUs for one standard write, and a transaction write is is going to consume eight WCUs. So this is this can get tricky, but like if you have sample data, so you can just do simple tests and find out. Okay, so if you're not sure about how to calculate these things, if you cross these RCU WCU limits for a particular partition. DynamoDB will use adaptive capacity feature. So that is a new feature that was introduced in 2019 to continue serving your read write requests. And before that feature was introduced, like if you cross these limits, like you know, per, like you need to understand that per partition, and we'll look at what partitions are. Like in fact, let's understand what, what a partition is. Your partitions are basically, uh, you have these tables and if you're used to relational databases, you, you know what is a partition table. Generally, relational databases, like, you know, if you're not talking about a cluster, right? So let's say, let's just take a standalone uh, relational database. Your partitions are all, all on the same host, but in NoSQL, it's a distributed databases. Uh, distributed database whether it's mongodb or dynamodb so your table is split into partitions or shards these partitions are distributed across many many hosts so yeah so and and how dynamodb like determines like how many partitions are required is is based on your your read write estimates like you know so when you're providing these estimates on the console, so let's say like read capacity units are going to be 3000. Like, you know, remember that the table that we created and the, and the capacity tab I showed you. So you go there and you, you put in these numbers, 3000 and 1000 write capacity units. Then, then basically because DynamoDB can perform at most 3000 RCUs per partition like per second and 1000 write capacity units per partition per second. So because of these limits, so it actually creates these many number of initial partitions. So this is the formula. The formula is RCUs by 3000 plus WCUs by 1000. So if you do the math, so you will have two 
partitions initially and then each partition can save or store up to 10 gigs if you cross these limits basically going back to the previous point DynamoDB's adaptive capacity feature will kick in and it will still try to serve your read write requests so what it actually does is it you know if suppose you have multiple partitions and you're hitting one partition heavily so DynamoDB will try to borrow these RCUs and WCUs uh, behind the scenes from another partition to basically support this this other partition which is being heavily uh, hit right by your application so it will borrow some RCUs and WCUs to to ensure your application is continuing to function normally so in case even after the adaptive capacity feature has kicked in you're still pushing your application or pushing the data uh, DynamoDB to its limits then your application will start erroring out with this particular uh, exception provision throughput exceeded exception there are ways to handle this like uh, there are you can also use auto scaling to to ensure you know you don't run into that error so you can use auto scaling let's see like you know how the data is distributed like we inserted a bunch of records and then let's see like how the data is distributed into these partitions so the partition key is passed into this hash function so dynamodb maintains hash functions so it's passed into the hash function which will basically tell you what the partition id is going to be so in the partition id like basically tells dynamodb where to actually insert those items so so based on the partition ids like uh, the items are distributed so as we insert the records or the items so it basically distributes like this so that's what i wanted to show you so here you know we assume that like there's only two partitions but yeah if you have many partitions it's it will distribute accordingly now indexes we already saw that we should create a primary key index when we create a table you can create a local second secondary index also so a primary key index has a partition key and sort key optionally but you can also create a local secondary index a local secondary index should have the same primary key as same partition key as this primary keys and a sort key the sort key will be different in the local secondary index and you can also have a global secondary index with the partition key that is totally different from the primary key right if you are if your application is going to query the data based on a totally different attribute partition key attribute then you should create global secondary indexes and there is this concept called projected attributes basically these attributes you can you can choose some attributes to be part of your indexes like these secondary indexes with local secondary index like let's say you choose a few attributes to be part of this local secondary index your query can basically query those attributes and also the other attributes which are not part of this local secondary index but global secondary index right if you did not choose let's say this first name attribute right if you did not choose first name attribute as a projected attribute if it's not part of this global secondary index then when you're using this partition key in your query you cannot actually select or you cannot retrieve data for that attribute for for the first name attribute in this case so projected attributes are important so I'm not showing you an example here what you need to know is you can create primary key index when you create a table then local secondary index and a global secondary index so the differences are in the way you choose the attributes of the partition keys and sort keys in these indexes so we will stop here i just want to ask one question just to make sure you learn something from this presentation which is when you create a table which settings determine whether your application is throttled or not now i want you to comment below and let me know what the answer is okay thank you so much